Good afternoon. I'm Father David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we are looking at a blessing from Macedonia. Now, we're going to look at what this blessing is, but before we do that, I want to talk about one of the things we see in our readings today, and that is from the Gospel reading where Jesus is teaching his followers to love their enemies and to pray for those who persecute them. And in that way, they would prove themselves to be children of God. And I like what Jesus goes on to say here in Matthew 5, verse 46 through 47, Jesus says this, For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? And Jesus isn't just trying to throw tax collectors and pagans under the bus here. What he's doing is he's calling his disciples, and also us really, right, to look beyond caring for our immediate friends, our relatives, those that are in our immediate circles of confluence, and and really enter into a revolutionary type of care and love for others that goes beyond our current borders, right? So extending our love and care beyond our current borders. And I think this is what St. Paul is leaning into when he's writing his second letter to the Corinthians in today's readings. And so in this second letter, we see in today's readings where Paul is calling the church in Corinth to demonstrate what at the time would have been a radical show of care and love and hospitality. In fact, many theologians Um, will go to these passages in Scripture for the grounds to theologically support their view on church ministry and mission support and that kind of a thing, right? So Paul here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, he's beginning to talk to the church in Corinth by referencing this blessing that was received from Macedonia. And what was that? Um, So, basically, he says that in giving, in Macedonia's giving to the churches and in their caring and support for the holy ones in Jerusalem, those churches had brought a blessing to them that had enabled them to endure their afflictions. So, what were the afflictions? Well, the church in Jerusalem, the Christians there, were basically being persecuted on all sides. So the Roman pagan culture did not want anything to do with the Christians. They didn't want to do business with them. They didn't want to associate with them because they were not worshiping the gods of Rome and Caesar and all that. And then on the other side, the Jewish culture didn't want anything to do with the Christians because they felt like they were falling away from the true Jewish faith and all this. And so they were kind of isolated as they were undertaking the work of God and the work of Christ in Jerusalem. And so as they came under that heavy persecution, the churches in Macedonia were sending money and support and things to them through Paul to kind of help them to keep going in their mission there. And that's why this text is often gone to by theologians and pastors and scholars for you know, supporting why we support foreign missions, how it's biblical, and that kind of thing. So, basically, one of the things that Paul is telling the church in Corinth here in 2 Corinthians 8.4 is about the character of the giving of the churches of Macedonia. They weren't doing this begrudgingly. They weren't doing this because they were being shamed to give or, or guilted into it, nothing like that. In fact, it was quite the opposite. The churches in Macedonia say this in chapter 8, verse 4, they begged insistently for the favor of taking part in the service to the Holy One. So they were asking Paul, how can they do more? And now Paul is kind of sharing this burden with the church in Corinth. He's going to Corinth and he's saying, listen, they need help. 
He, doesn't, he didn't want to really get any more help from Macedonia than he was already getting, but he wanted to give other people and other churches, other Christians, the opportunity to join in this mission that was across borders, right? It was in a different area. And so I think this really ties into the radical care that we see in Jesus' teaching from the Gospels, where he's teaching about you know, reaching beyond borders. So Paul goes on then to encourage a church in Corinth to do the same, but it's kind of interesting the way he does it. So in 2 Corinthians 8, 7, we see Paul kind of appealing to their sense of Christian wholeness and balance. He says, now, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. So again, Paul's not shaming or guilting Corinth into helping with this foreign mission. Paul's pointing out just another area of Christian life that we can excel at, we can excel at if we have the means and the will to do it, right? It's good. It's good balance because charity is a virtue, and we can be doing good in our faith, in our hope, in our temperance, in our justice, but we also need to give the opportunity to manifest the virtue of charity. So I think what Paul is doing here is he's looking at the church in Corinth. He's saying, okay, you're doing good in all these virtues, in all these Christian areas, but you have an, I'm going to give you an opportunity here to also excel in your charity by helping with this mission. And I think they take it on. Um, so he does this by teaching that giving and caring to this mission across these borders is a way to manifest that. And as I was kind of looking at all this, it just happens that this is sacred synchronicity. I'm reading this book by Robert Morris called The Blessed Life unlocking the rewards of generous giving. And there's a couple of things that he says here that really stuck out to me in this. He says, invest your money where it will make the largest possible impact for the kingdom of God. And what I like about that is, you know, in real world terms, we think about investing our monies in stocks and bonds and this and that because we want to see a return. And I think what Robert Morris is pointing out is that we can invest our money in ways that the return's different. So instead of having a return as in, you know, percentages and more money or this or that, he's saying invest your money where it's going to make an impact and bring a return for the kingdom of God. What else does Robert Moore say? He says, the most precious and lasting blessings, there should be two S's there, that come from giving are often ones no one sees. And that's so true. Oftentimes we give, we don't even know how much it's helping a person. But one thing that's interesting about giving, especially generous giving, is what it does to us and how God blesses us when we give. And that's something that can't be expressed, really. So what's our application for today? It's this, and it's a question. How am I manifesting my charity and care in the real world within my family, my church, and my community? I think that's a good question to think about. And when I say manifesting charity, I mean, how am I bringing that into the real world? Not intentions and words, but what are the actions that are manifesting my charity in the world? Well, thank you for joining me today as we've looked at the blessing from Macedonia. (laughs) 